everybody, and uh, welcome to a very rainy and stormy KL. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to get uh, some of the power cut here. But uh, today we're going to start talking about phase difference and oscilloscopes. Uh, so our aim, to aim today is to make sure that you can all calculate phase difference and also set up an oscilloscope. Basically, and describe to me what some of the controls do. Uh, I also like it if you could confidently find unknowns using the oscilloscope. And um, right at the end of this video, what I would like you to do is start thinking about a method which would help you to uh, work out the speed of sound using an oscilloscope, which is a pretty cool little practical that we're going to try in our lesson. Okay, so what we went through in the lesson today was some basic stuff about waves. So you should remember uh, that we have from a zero displacement of a wave to its maximum displacement is called the amplitude. And from the crest of one wave to the crest of the next wave is called a wavelength. Now it's really important to remember that we don't just have to measure wavelength from a peak to a peak. We could also measure it from a trough to a trough, or from a midpoint on its way up to the next midpoint on its way up. In fact, any two identical points on a wave will give us the same wavelength. And we're going to explain that in a bit more detail today when we start to think about phase. So it becomes really, really important that you understand that the wavelength, we can actually drag that wavelength um, arrow showing the length all the way across our wave, and it will be the same at every point. We also talked a little bit about the wave equation, so you should remember this from my GCSE as well, which is that the velocity of a wave or the wave speed is the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. You do have to remember these equations, it is a lowercase, sorry, symbols, it is a lowercase v for wave speed, it is a lowercase f for frequency, and it is the Greek symbol lambda for wavelength. In order for this equation to work, wave speed must be in meters per second, the frequency must be in hertz, and the wavelength must be in meters. One more little reminder, just remember that to find a frequency from the time period, we do 1 divided by the time period. So the time period, which we capital T to, that is the time taken for one complete wave. Um, so that would be in seconds. So the frequency is 1 divided by seconds or per second. Weirdly, in physics, we actually give the unit of hertz, hz for frequency as well. Hertz mean exactly the same as per second. Hertz and per second are interchangeable. So if you then check the, some, the equation again, it does make sense. We're doing something in per second multiplied by something in meters. So our wave speed is, again, meters per second. Let me just uh, stop my computer from going to sleep. And we'll carry on. Another bit of wave basics is the difference between transverse and longitudinal wave, something that once again you have studied quite a lot at IGCSE. You should remember that a transverse wave is one where the particles travel perpendicular to the direction of travel, which at A level we're going to step up a little bit and we're going to call the direction of propagation. So propagation is the direction that energy is travelling in the wave, where well, you can think of it as the direction that the wave is travelling. So for a transverse wave, they travel perpendicular to propagation. For a longitudinal wave, that's where each of the individual particles does that, and that travels along it. And you should remember playing with the swing key is really uncomfortable with that kind of stuff. Transverse waves can be polarised. That's what you're playing with polarising filters doing. So you should also remember that uh, in the image at the bottom there, you can see some unpolarised light coming in. Um, and it is then being polarised through the first filter. So the first filter is turning it into a plane polarised going up and down. And if I try to pass that plane polarised light through a second filter, which is at a cross uh, diagonal to it, no wave will come out at all because uh, we don't have anything that's polarised in that direction anymore. So we can use that to get a single orientation. Obviously, because it's talking about going up and down, left and right, polarisation only works with transverse waves. Because longitudinal waves are doing this business and going together, we can't polarise it, it wouldn't make sense. So now we're going to add on a little bit more A-level stuff. 
And we're going to start to think now about phase. Initially, phase doesn't make a lot of sense. It seems like a slightly arbitrary system. But as you do more and more physics and a bit more maths, you'll start to see why we've split phase up in this way. So I want you to look on the bottom of this image and you can see a whole wave. How do I refer to a particular point in the wave? Well, up till now, we might say, OK, I want you to get the peak of the wave. Or we might say, OK, I want you to get the trough of the wave. So that's quite simple. What about the midpoint on a wave? Well, the midpoint on this one is as it's going down, so we could say the point of zero along the wave. But then saying zero gets a bit more confusing because there are three zero points. There's a zero point as the wave starts to rise, right at the, the uh, origin of the axis. There's a second zero point as the wave comes back down, and we get back to a third zero point. So how do I refer to a specific point? Well, I could do something quite simple and just say percentages. So I could say that the first trough occurs at 25% of the wave, the last trough occurs at 75% of the wave, the midpoint occurs at 50%. But for slightly elegant and beautiful but kind of complex reasons, along a sine wave it's actually easier to refer to these points along it by an angle. So what we can say, if you look at the top image, you're going to cover this diagram loads in year 13 when we do simple harmonic motion. Um, but for now, can you see that as we move around a circle, if I was to just take the horizontal, sorry, the vertical position along that wave and have my piece of paper scrolling along uh, as like a time base, what I'm getting is a sine wave. Now if you look a bit close, more closely at this diagram, you can see there's going to be an angle from zero degrees that this uh, circle that's turning around is acting through. Now what that means is I can start to refer to each point along my wave as an angle rather than a percentage, say, or anything else. And like I say, this doesn't totally make sense in year 12, but when we do year 13, you're going to be really glad that you learned this. So what this becomes is we say that one whole wave from start to finish takes 360 degrees. To do half a wave, then, will be 180 degrees. And we get our first peak at 90 degrees. Now, straight away, for those of you that are doing maths, it starts to become a little bit simpler. When we tell you to sketch a graph, you should remember, well, I know that a sine wave has a peak at, I'm sorry, this is, yeah, this is a sine wave. I know that a sine wave has a peak at 90 degrees and it has a trough at 270 degrees, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of already makes intuitive sense. But when we start to do a bit more maths, like I say in year 13, this will make even more sense and you'll see why we use angles. For now, you just need to know that we call the phase of the wave as kind of the position along it. So the first dot that you can see on the bottom wave there is at 90 degrees. The second dot looks like it's about halfway through here. Uh, so it will be halfway between 90 and 180, so about 140 or so. I can't do math mental arithmetic, 140. No, 90 plus 45 is what, 135 degrees? 135 degrees. We'll go with that. So now we're going to start to think about uh, some things that we'll carry on into our next lesson that we need to think about an oscilloscope. Now an oscilloscope is probably the most complicated piece of equipment that you will use at A level and you will never be expected to do one in your actual practical exam because nobody expects schools to buy enough of them. However, your practical exam will very, very often require you to plan an experiment using an oscilloscope, so it's really important that you know what they do. If you look at the diagram of the oscilloscope that I've put there, you can see that it's simply a graphing machine. That's all it does. An oscilloscope just draws a voltage time graph. Now we can use that to do loads of cool stuff. So if we connect our oscilloscope up to a uh, speaker, then we get a uh, trace of our sound wave. How do we do that? Well, there are three controls that you need to know for a oscilloscope. The first one is the time base. So the time base basically controls the time per square, the number of seconds 
that each square along the x-axis takes up. You also need to control the gain, and the gain basically controls the y-axis. It controls how many volts take up each square, and then there's a trigger, which I haven't animated on my PowerPoint, but never mind. The trigger tells the oscilloscope when to start drawing the wave, and you'll see in the lab why this is important, but basically, um, if we don't have a trigger, then it will draw one wave, and then it will start drawing the next wave. And unless it happens to perfectly sync up through luck, the second wave will be drawn slightly in a different place to the first wave. Now we don't want that because we want to be able to read things off the screen. So the trigger will say, only start drawing at a phase of, say, 10 degrees. So when the wave hits 10 degrees, it will start drawing the trace. And that means that every trace will be drawn over every other one. Uh, so here I have three different uh, traces with three different settings. So the first one has a gain of 2 volts per division. And if we look closely, it looks to me, uh, now I am standing fairly far away from my screen, but that looks like 4 squares uh, from the centre of the wave to the top of the wave. Now that means that the amplitude of that wave is 8 volts, because every square, or division, is worth 2 volts. I have 4 of them, so I have an 8 volt uh, amplitude. Again, trying to strain my eyes a little bit, 1, 2, 3, it looks like it's 4 squares between the peak of one wave and the peak of the next wave. So that means that because my time base is 50 microseconds per division. The time period for that wave is 5 times 4, which is 200 microseconds. So if I know my time base, I could then work out my frequency. Depending on how uh, pushed for time I am, I may stop the video here and ask you to choose uh, some multiple choice answers for the remainders. Um, or you, I might just ask you to pause the video and just think, can you work out the time period, the frequency, and the amplitude of each of these waves. So that's uh, about all you need to know for this lesson. When you come in next lesson, uh, I'd like you to try and find the speed of sound. This is quite cool. The speed of, finding the speed of sound using an oscilloscope uses a feature that I haven't talked about yet, which is called dual tracing. Dual tracing oscilloscope means having two separate waves shown together. So what we have is we have one wave for one input, a second wave for the other one. We put them both on the screen together. What you can then do is find the phase difference between two waves. And phase difference means if I have a peak of one wave occurring at a trough of the second wave, well the first wave will have a phase of 90 degrees at that point, the second wave will have a phase of 270 degrees at that point, so there'll be 180 degrees out of phase. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the lesson. But I wonder if, as you're finishing up and just thinking about this, if you can come up with a plan. It is possible to find the speed of the sound using a loudspeaker, two microphones, and a oscilloscope. You're going to need to use phase difference to do this, and some of the wave equations that See what you can come up with. Good luck.